Hey guys, thank you for joining me for a bit of Friday fun. Um, today, we've talked before on here. Um, most of you who know me know that I love reading. I've talked before how I like to read pretty much anything. Um, and I figured I've been going through a lot of these fun videos. Um, and unless something really comes up that I feel like I need to bring up that's particularly fun, um, I'm thinking of talking about some things that I'm reading. Uh, some of them will just just be random fun stuff. Others will be uh, more some things that I'm reading that are uh, significant to me. But today I wanted to talk about something that a lot of you probably don't know about me. Uh, you know that I said I've loved reading, but there's one thing that I really enjoy reading and learning about that... Um, I think most of us have enjoyed at, at one point in time, um, but a lot of people kind of grow up and they move away from, and that is mythology. Um, now, normally when we talk about mythology or myths, um, it's kind of just all lumped together as fiction, um, or and maybe you'll think of it as more of like a, a more well-developed fictional world, so like there's the Lord of the Rings mythology, there's the Harry Potter mythology, and, and that's kind of where it's left at, and so it's any kind of larger world then becomes a mythology. And maybe that's true or not, um, that can all get debated, but that's not the kind of myth I'm talking about. Um, I am talking about the classical myths, um, and I've got uh, two books up here right now that I'm super excited about. Um, they were actually my dad's. Now I have them that cover mythology. The way that I would describe a myth is that it is a story that explains a deeper truth better than just saying what the truth is. Um, spoiler alert, if you want to hear a bit more about that, check out my Saturday video coming out tomorrow where that's what I'm going to look at. Um, but these myths, it's like the, the ancient Greek myths, um, that were, um, maybe religious, maybe there's debate about how that kind of belief, whether it was really religious in the sense that we think of with religion or whether it was just a way for them to help understand what happened in the world. But, uh, the, the great Greek myths and with, with Greek myths, um, I have this. It's a, it's a super nice. Um, this is technically considered leather bound. And the title is uh, The Age of Fable by Bullfinch. And um, in this in this book, it it's um, it's a man, Englishman or uh, American, much more modern. Uh, author attempting to retell the great myths um, of Greece. And so you have um, Prometheus and Pandora, Apollo and Daphne, Pyramus and Thisbe, Cephalus and uh, Procris. Uh, you, have, you have all of these um, Greek gods that it brings up. And there's a ton in here. Uh, there's 42. Um, and most of them are Greek. There's actually... Um, some that aren't quite Greek, like Beowulf, would be one of those type, kinds of myths. And um, it looks like it went into some others that I'm very excited to, to get into. But, um, you know, the stories, they were so interesting. They were very entertaining. I personally enjoyed um, getting into uh, Greek myths, even somewhat getting into Shakespeare. When you get past the language barrier, um, some of the stories were very engaging. Um and th there are always stories that just mean so much more. Like you'll, you can just pick up a random fiction book, uh, which I have plenty of. I'm getting ready to start another one um, that's just going to be light, easy reading. Um, and the story doesn't really go very far. And there's not like a lesson to gain from the story. Maybe the story is fun and entertaining. Maybe it's not. Uh, but that's about all that there is with it. Um, there are plenty of those. And those are fine. Um, and there's no reason that you shouldn't read those. I think we should to help give our minds a rest, to help us 
continue engaging in reading. Uh, reading is one of the best ways to learn, but to continue engaging with reading, sometimes you just need to have fun and enjoy yourself. But some of the best, most engaging, uh, most well-developed stories are these classics, and the myths are that way. Um, these Greek myths that tell a deep story, a lot of times they're so well-developed and well-thought-out and well-told that I, I have a hard time not having fun reading them. Um, and uh, this, this book of mythology is going to be one. And then... Um, I almost didn't grab this. Uh, we went through a bunch of my dad's books, um, and at our yard sale, we uh, sold off a bunch of them, and I didn't grab this until after the yard sale when I realized what it was. And so this book is called The Sky Stone by Jack White. Um, it's the first in a series. And I didn't grab it because I'm not a big fan of fantasy. Um, I'll read it. It's I, I can enjoy it every once in a while, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. And that's kind of what it looked like. It was going to be some Middle Ages fantasy, and I was not particularly interested in picking it up until I read the description on the back. You should always read the description when you can. And this is one time I almost paid for it. If um, this book had sold at the garage sale, I would have paid for it. Because uh, this is book one and what's called the Camelot Chronicles. But... Um, the very first statement about the book, the first review about the book is Jack White is a master storyteller. White breathes life into the Arthurian myths by weaving the reality of history into them. And uh, it then goes on to say it's the story of, you know, Arthur pulled the sword from the stone. Camelot came into existence. There's a power struggle and ultimately Arthur and Camelot kind of fell. And uh, it, it kind of sets it at a specific time in England. And um, yeah, it's King Arthur and the, the Knights of the Round Table and Merlin and the Sorcerer's Stone, all, all of these kinds of things. Um, and the, there are several books that lay out um, kind of a little bit of before, making it actual, making it more historical, um, and then kind of drawing it all out. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a myth. It, all of those are myths. It's the talk about how um, you pursue power and what does that mean and that some people seem to ha just have a, a destiny given to them and how do they accept that destiny and live into it and, you know, all these kinds of myths, these great, extremely interesting myths. I love this kind of mythology. Um, and these are going to be much... I mean, obviously, this is book one of, like, seven. It's not a small book. It's some 400-some pages, almost 500 pages. Um, even a book, if it's, like, this kind of thing, um, it probably isn't going to be able to. It has 40-some myths in it, so it can't go uh, too deep into any one myth, but they don't seem the most approachable. They don't seem as easy to get into, but there are plenty of collections of these myths, and a lot of them tell them in ways that are very easy to kind of get an idea of what is there in the myth, and I just find it fascinating. Um, I find it very enjoyable to read them, and uh, maybe you learn some about how the world works, and maybe you, you don't, and it's just, you know, well, there's the book, and that's just what it is, and just, you know, okay, whatever. But, um, yeah, I, I really love myths, um, and I do find them very fascinating, and I'm very excited um, to be able to get to read these books. So um, that's some fun that I plan on having soon. Um, I hope that all of you can continue having fun, whether you enjoy myths or not. That's just fine. Um, I hope that you have some fun, and I pray that uh, God will bless you guys, and... I pray that you have some fun this weekend. Take care. Bye.